This is the Wise Guy Radio Show, a podcast dedicated to educating and inspiring through conversations with today's top talents in the world of glass. Hey, hey, what's happening? Welcome to a Glass Floors Companion, episode number 23. How the hell are you doing today? Yes, I know. It's been like a month of Sundays since we've had an episode, and I do appreciate everybody who's been downloading and listening to past episodes, as there is a huge catalog of shows I've recorded over the last five years, and I uh, just can't believe it's going to be coming up on season six, I think is how the numbers work, uh, come June 5th, which was when uh, episode one of uh with Rashawn Jones uh first debuted it's kind of crazy so thanks to everybody who's been listening and keeping on and touching base and sending me messages and all that good stuff uh before I forget if you can uh, leave me a review out there on iTunes I am putting together a little uh fun I guess a bribe which I've done in the past because I know how uh some of y'all out there need, need a little bribe to, to to get off your ass and do things so uh, I'm going to be putting together a little sticker pack for you as my way of saying thank you for leaving a review on iTunes. Uh, so basically between now I'm recording this, uh, today is, what the hell is today? March 25th. So between the day of this recording of March 25th, uh, this you won't be hearing this until probably the 26th, but uh, between March 25th and the end of April, uh, anybody who leaves me a review and then sends me an email with a screenshot of your review, uh, you can really just leave them on iTunes, I believe, is how most of the podcast apps are working nowadays, or on uh, Apple Podcasts. Um, whether you have a Droid or you have uh, iPhone or whatever, you can still use the Apple Podcast app, um, or you can even go online and uh, help leave a review there. Um, whether it's a five-star review or a star review in general or any type of written review, uh, both definitely help. But one or the other also works. And just do a little screenshot, send it my way via email to wiseguymedia at gmail.com. I'll have that link in the show notes. And I also will have a link to the podcast on Apple iTunes in the show notes to uh, help make it a little easier for you. And this just really just helps with the algorithms and the visibility that is out there in the world of the lords of algorithms within iTunes. Uh, who is the main masters that hold all of our podcast episodes and uh, kind of steer in the directions that they go into and popularity and visibility and all that good stuff. So we've been getting some really good download numbers, even though I had not posted episodes, but I do want to help increase the numbers and the exposure really of our community in general because uh, there's some incredible things that are going out there in the world of glass right now that I hope the world sees. And uh, that being said, I know that a lot of the world has been watching Netflix's season two of Blown Away, uh, which featured our pal Mike Shelbo, a member of the lamp working community. It was really cool to see him on there. Um, I guess if you haven't seen the entire season, I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to say too much about it. Um, but just a uh, Kind of a, uh, what am I looking for the word here? I don't know. But just on a side note, uh, coming up in future episode, uh, we're going to be doing a full breakdown of the entire season of Blown Away. I actually had thought about doing a episode by episode uh, kind of review with my wife, who's not a glass blower. So it coming from a perspective of uh, someone that's a layman in a sense. Um, but I don't know. The episodes are kind of short. The season was eight episodes I believe so we're just going to do a single episode breakdown of the show and talk about it and uh, I've reached out to Mike Shelbo about having him on the show as well so uh, hopefully he will return and get on the show it would be pretty cool to have him on here to talk about his experience some behind the scenes stuff about that too so if you have not yet seen Blown Away season two definitely go check it out on Netflix um, I personally just on one little side note here I was not a huge fan of season one I um, or season two, honestly, I, I love the premise of the of the show and the concept and the fact that it's exposing the world to uh, the world of glass. Uh, I have guests every day over at the Mouse House bringing it up and asking me about it, and I give them my opinion, let them know I'm not really a fan of it. However, I do enjoy the fact that there uh, is exposure of the glass world. <coughs> 
to the rest of the world so they can actually see what happens. However, which I'll get into in our full review of the show, you don't really get to see a lot of the process, which to me is extremely frustrating. Uh, those of us who understand glass, whether you've worked on the torch or worked the furnace or both, um, you have an understanding of what it takes and what goes into it. And for those watching that don't have an idea, uh, it just looks magical to them, which it is, but it also just looks like you gather some glass, you make a couple things, and voila, you have this amazing piece. Uh, they don't see the cold work that goes into it and all those kind of different things outside of the studio uh, to have the final piece of art. And as a lot of us know, uh, it's more than just making a pipe or a vase or a bowl or some kind of character. There's a lot that goes into it, including all the stuff that will let it up to that piece being created, like all the stuff you broke in the process of learning. So, like I said, we'll get into that down the road in another episode. Uh, some other important news that's been happening, uh, two uh, members of the Glass community, um, well, one person that is a main member, another person who um, is a member via uh, Connections. Um, but first is uh, Sarita Glass, uh, Sarah Hancock. She lost her house to a fire recently. Um, Steve and Lacey Walton, also known as Scuba Steve and Laceface, put together a GoFundMe uh, to help her recover, and uh, they set it at twenty thousand. They've actually raised twenty three thousand dollars already, which is just fucking incredible. And thank you to anybody who's donated. I'm um, gonna have a link to the GoFundMe in the show notes to help out. Um, I'm gonna be doing a couple fundraisers here myself uh, for her, but also for uh, Joaquin, who was a guest on episode four. Uh, he also lost his house to a fire. Uh, thank God, between both situations, nobody was injured. Everybody got out safely. Um, there was property lost, uh, equipment and stuff that was able to be salvaged is there, but you can go check out both of their Instagrams. Uh, I'll have the links in the show notes, uh, Sarita Glass, Sarah Hancock's her name, but Sarita Glass is her, as her Instagram. And then, uh, Joaquin's is Blazing Heart Productions. Uh, it's just tragic with 2020, the, the way the year went and now 2021 is not going too well for some folks in our community. And, uh, as we all know, we're one big happy family and we are here to help each other out. So I wanted to make sure that I uh, am bringing this up. So if you're not aware of this happening, uh, definitely go check out Sarita Glass on Instagram and also uh, Joaquin at Blazing Heart Productions. Um, Joaquin was uh, him and uh, Eli Maze together uh, created, co-produced Pipe Town USA documentary that came out uh, about the pipe community and how it started in up in Oregon. Fascinating documentary. Uh, one way you can help out Joaquin is by uh, purchasing... The documentary that he has, it's available on DVD, I believe, and I'll have links for that in the show notes as well. Uh, but just my heart just bleeds for these folks, and uh, I just couldn't imagine. Um, I did a past episode on getting yourself set up for emergencies. Uh, being here in Florida, I, it was actually an episode I did. I recorded it out in my porch uh, during Hurricane... Uh, what hurricane was that? I'm having a complete brain fart. Either way, it was a motherfucker. <laughs> but I recorded the episode out on the porch, and it was basically just uh, some things and ways that you can get prepared uh, just in case. Because I know a lot of you out there in the West Coast that have dealt with fires in the past, sometimes you got to just grab whatever you can to get the fuck out of there before you know the fires get to you, and then you're stuck somewhere for a couple weeks at a time. Um, if you're a glassblower and you need to grab your equipment, the best thing to do is just have a tucker tote, have an emergency list taped to the top of that, and just pretty much have it ready to be filled and get the fuck out of there as fast as you can. I don't remember what episode number it was, but I will put the link in the show notes for that episode as well. And again, it was just a quick little Wise Guy Minute episode. Just be coming prepared for emergencies because uh, we never know. And again, like here in Florida, we have a couple days away to see when things are coming so we can prepare. Uh, but if you're out west and you're dealing with forest fires, sometimes you don't have but minutes to get out. And in this case with uh, Sarah and Joaquin both, they were the same way. They had minutes to get out. And fortunately, again, they all got out of their houses safely and uh, everybody survived, thank God. So we can always help them rebuild now since they still have their lives. So again, I'll have all the links to their GoFundMes for both uh, parties in the show notes for you. And even if you can just help with just $1, it's whatever you can helps. It's It just goes a long way. So there you go. Hope you guys can help out there. Uh, we just had champs here in Orlando just passed us. Saw some pretty good notes from those on Instagram who were uh, talking about the show and sharing their uh, their productivity and their sales. And a lot of folks I saw actually did pretty good. I know the last time I went to champs here in Orlando, um, it was the first year that they had it here. 
And I was blown away by the amount of import glass that was in the, in the space. I'm not sure how that is this year because of COVID and the lack of stuff able to come across seas and being imported. Uh, so I'm just kind of curious to see how that went with that. I'm going to talk to some folks and just kind of ask some questions behind the scenes. And I will fill you in when I find out. And speaking of trade shows, Las Vegas is coming up very soon. They are going to be at the Bally's Las Vegas Resort in Las Vegas, Nevada, from May 13th to the 15th, 2021. As long as everything goes as planned, uh, I will have Amy on this show here pretty soon. We're going to be talking about this year's uh, trade show, as well as some of the precautions and measures that they are taking to make sure that everybody that is selling and visiting is safe. And uh, definitely something to look forward to, having her back to talk about this upcoming show. Um, I want to go this year, but I, I'm not prepared for it myself personally. Uh, financially wise, I could fly out there with rates right now for flights are so cheap. Uh, but just time wise and just the fact that we're still in this pandemic and I have not yet got my vaccine and all that good stuff. I'm going to be staying home, watching from a distance and getting some uh, information from some friends and folks that are going to be inside uh, as well as straight directly from Amy Short, who's putting on the show with her cast of amazing folks out there that are putting on this trade show. So stay tuned for that as well. And on today's episode, I have a interesting talk with a uh, guest from Aqua. And today I have a pretty unique uh, conversation with Stephen Randolph uh, from Aqua Payments. Uh, this is the uh, first time having someone of this caliber uh, talking about this kind of stuff. I know in the past we've talked about issues that whether you're a smoke shop, a uh, dispensary, a glass blower, pipe maker, uh, maintaining and, and obtaining payments uh, can be a real pain in the ass when you're dealing with some of these major corporations out there that are not friendly to the communities. And I know there's some banks out there that are willing to help out um, in this conversation. Him and I talk about some, not specific banks in general, uh, but like credit unions. Uh, typically, I think it's because they're more privately run banks. Uh, they're more apt to help high-risk businesses. Um, and this conversation is about high-risk businesses, uh, whether you are a smoke shop or a brothel. You know, it's all high. It's considered all high-risk. And I know myself, I've been affected through PayPal uh, having over $1,000 in sales, uh, basically given back to the customer who did, in fact, receive their stuff and said that they didn't. And even though I had proof of shipping and tracking information and everything else, uh, they sided with the customer. And I pretty much said, fuck them from here on out. I don't take any money or use them for anything. And uh, I'm not going to promote negative things on the show, but I wanted to bring Steven on. He actually contacted me, and some of you out there may have actually received a message on Instagram, uh, him just letting you know, hey, if you need processing for high-risk payments, uh, there are folks, and they're a newer company, uh, but his background is pretty unique. He's also a stand-up comic, which is fun. So this is a fun, unique conversation him and I have. Uh, it's a short episode, short conversation, uh, just basically because it's not glass talk. You know, I could have gone on and still talked to him for hours because we have a lot in common. Uh, but I really wanted just to kind of fine tune the conversation about the payment processing and stuff. So if you are looking for payment processing, uh, there's they're not affiliated with the show at all. They're not sponsoring the show at all. I just wanted to bring them up and bring them on the show and also promote them because they're doing a benefit for the community. Uh, so if you're looking for an affordable way and need to promote or to uh, process payments for sales, whether you're a smoke shop or you have a website, uh, take credit cards, etc. Aqua Payments is definitely a company to check out. So I hope you enjoy this episode with Stephen Randolph. Uh, I'll have all of his links in the show notes. You can find them on Aqua Payments on Instagram. And uh, again, hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to to check out the links for Sarah and Joaquin, uh, their GoFundMes to help those folks get back on their feet and get some shelter over their head and their homes rebuilt. And uh, other than that, I hope you're enjoying this spring, whether you're freezing or you're sweating like we are down here in Florida. And you're staying healthy. And again, thanks for the patience for episodes coming out. And uh, other than that, again, if you can leave me a review out there on iTunes, would help out tremendously. Take a screenshot, send me an email at wiseguymedia at gmail.com. I'll have the link for my email in the show notes. And then I'll send you a little sticker pack in the mail as a thank you. And uh, until next time, happy Melton. Love you so much. Take care. Peace. Hey, what's up, Steven? Welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing, man? Pretty good, brother. I'm, I'm, 
I'm happy to be here. Yeah, man. Likewise, good to have you on. Uh, it's always fun. So, my, you know, those that listen to the show know that, that we're all about glass and talk, but I also like to have uh, sideshows uh, talking about things within the industry that I find of importance, whether it's health, uh, legal matters, you know, for you, for instance, payment processing, which is I know has been an issue uh, within the pipe industry, the cannabis industry, lots of adult industries just in general over, you know, 20, 30 years, uh, if not longer than that. And yep. uh, you guys are kind of a, a somewhat on the forefront of really helping out those that are in need. And I've heard horror stories from smoke shops and, you know, people losing thousands and thousands of dollars, whether it's being confiscated from banks or things being returned or myself, like I had an issue with PayPal having a customer dispute and I couldn't fight it. You know, if we have payments or, or things that are being shipped through the post office uh, because it's we're using the post office to ship pipes. In a sense, it's a federal offense because we're shipping tobacco products and things across state lines. So we can't dispute damages. You know, there's like, there's so much bullshit we have to deal with. And uh, yeah. I was excited that you guys had contacted me because uh, this is something that I find of importance right now, especially with the way that things have been going virtually and uh, mm -hmm. payments being processed, you know, through Cash App and, you know, Zells and different things like that. But uh, payment processing in general is important because for one, it's convenient. And two, it helps you to keep track of all your shit, your payments, your ins and outs, your taxes, you know, all that stuff. And it really legitimizes yourself as a business, I think as well. So, uh, I agree a hundred percent. So before we get, I, I get off the tracks here. If you want to, uh, give us a little background and how you uh, got into the actual processing, pay, you know, payments industry and, uh, where you are now with things. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, well, it, it was kind of an interesting road, just like any other, you know, getting into most businesses, it's not just, a, a you know, you, you kind of stumble in and you're like, how did this happen? And where am I? And what is, I, you know, nine years ago, I didn't even know what high risk payments was. Yeah. And here I am owning my own, my own company in high risk payments. So um, it, it started with a lunch in Venice, California with an acquaintance that we, uh, we, we got along, we met through mutual friends and he said, Hey, we, you know, I happened to be living in Venice at the time. He said, oh, you live in Venice too. You, you ever want to meet on Abbott Kenny? That's like the cool street there for, for lunch. I'd love it. And we went to lunch, me and this guy. And we'd never talked business. I didn't know what he did. He didn't know what I did. Um, I was, a, you know, still am a stand-up comic at the time. And, um, and you know, eventually we, we started going to regular lunches on Saturdays. And I said, his name was Theo, or is Theo. I said, Theo, what, what do you do? He said, I'm a payments attorney. I said a payments attorney and he goes oh I'll, I'll get into it one time it's kind of a wild world and i said no no get into it right now what what the hell is a payments attorney he goes you know anytime you buy like a like either like like pornography or or a nutraceutical pill or cbd or whatever online and i said yeah and he said you know if there's ever been a dispute online and i said yeah when you don't get your money back he goes i'm the guy that they call and i said well who's they and he said whoever's paying so whether that's the merchant selling it, whether that's the customer who's pissed off, whether that's the FTC who wants to go after someone or the FDA, he, he represented whoever was paying. And I said, okay, well, it's like, you know, a couple hundred bucks here or there. I, I just didn't have like a scope of what he was doing. He said, no, 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 no. At, at the, you know, at, at a certain level, he goes, he goes, if you ever want to know what I do, Google the Snuggies guy. You remember that Snuggies? Yeah. The, 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 the he goes, Google the Snuggies guy. And, then, and he goes, you'll find out the whole kind of hustle and what people are doing and where people are getting in trouble and what the deal is. And so I, I, I Googled the Snuggie guy. And I guess he, don't quote me on this. You can Google it for real fat, you know, the, the actual factual numbers. But he sold however many millions of Snuggies and he made millions more putting people on an automatic subscription to Snuggie magazine or to some health magazine. Hmm. And, um, and I was like, oh, what, weird. Yeah, I remember the Snuggie. Well, he, there, there's, there's just this whole slew of, of folks in, in e-commerce that, you know, will sell this product late at night on TV. And then all of a sudden they hook you up with an automatic um, magazine or whatever it is and, and, and bang your credit card for six months. Then they get caught. They get in trouble. They go hide on a boat somewhere in the Cayman Islands. They hire an attorney. And because of activity like that, anytime you sell something online with e-commerce, it, there's a certain level of risk. Um, and if there's a subscription model to it, there's an extra higher level of risk. And so therefore it's called high risk payments. I mean, because folks are able to do kind of crazy things. So it, 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 it um, that's, that's the high risk world. So anybody selling adult, a 
subscription model. Uh, women's makeup uh, is high risk, believe it or not, because there's a high return on that. Anything we call it cannabis related. So, so you you folks are cannabis re- to, in our world is cannabis related. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. um, whether that's soil, whether that's growing um, lights, whether that's uh, an actual a pipe um, vape, it, it's, it's cannabis related and there's issues there, uh, because of reputational risks, you know, like a lot of times people at the bank will say, well, I don't know if we want this on our, on our portfolio or on our books. And so there's kind of a reputational, uh, risk element to it. So that elevates the, the risk and that makes it a little more expensive and a little more tricky to get processing, which I think is unfair. I don't smoke anymore, but I did my whole life. And, um, I, I, I love cannabis. I think it's great. And the fact that someone may be selling a really cool bitchin uh, uh, dab rig or, or, or cannabis pipe that I don't think that they should be in trouble for, for selling that or have to hide around or do Zelle payments or, hey, Venmo me and I, let's hope we don't get caught. I, just, I think yeah. that's ridiculous. I think, yeah. the, I think the thieves out there, I think the, the FTC and the FDA and everybody that's kind of cracking down on people that are stealing, that's horrible. It's the worst thing in the world if you're, you know, someone thinks they're buying a product. But but I think you know my, where my heart's really in is like reputational, like adult. If if you know all of a sudden they just shut down a bunch of adult companies because they don't like it, or they shut down a bunch of you know whoever it is, I think everybody should ha- unless they're not breaking the law should have access to the payment um, gateway, and that that's not what's happening. But but I digress. So I found out about the uh, the Snuggies guy. I googled it, and then he said, "Hey, I'd love to have you come and do marketing at my law firm." And I said, "I'm a stand-up comedian." no, thank you. I'm not going to, he goes, no, no, I just want you to post some funny stuff and, you know, help me blog and, and help me on, on LinkedIn and Instagram. Cause I'm a little bit younger than him and help me kind of spruce up my company and reach out to people. And I said, I said, I'm not interested in working at a law firm. I said, I don't want to wear a suit and tie, you know, cause I was doing stand up at night. And he mm-hmm. goes, you can come in from 12, 12 to five. I'm an e-com attorney. I don't see my clients. You could wear a speedo and up. And I, I was like, yeah. okay, speed out 12 to five. He goes, do you have health insurance? I said, not right now. Like every stand-up comic, you know? And he goes, I'm buying you health insurance. And I said, I don't know, man, I'm pretty expensive. And he gave me a rate that I was like, whoa, because these, it's very niche. So these e-commerce attorneys, you ever get in trouble, you'll find out you ever have issues and you need an e-commerce attorney. It's, you know, it's $500 an hour, $700 an hour. So he offered me a really good rate. I, you know, it's like the Godfather thing. I, I, he gave me an offer I couldn't refuse. Yeah, right. So there I am, <laughs> doing marketing for a payments company, and then doing stand up at the comedy store in Hollywood at night. And, uh, you know, I learned payments really well, like just just by doing the ads for him and the marketing and and reaching out to people on on social media and LinkedIn. And you know, three years later. I'm working with this guy who's an expert in payments and I didn't even realize it was happening because I was just so involved in reaching out to people, you know, making him look good online. And I, I learned more. It was like being in the medical is like being in the ER. I saw the blood. I, I learned, I learned, uh, like uh, under a physician. So yeah. I just, I, I didn't realize how much I was learning and what would happen a typical thing. So say you have like a, a glassware company, let's talk about it. You folks. So you have a glassware company doing a hundred thousand, dollars a month, right? Some, you know, bigger hundred to 300,000, some huge company. And all of a sudden their processor steals from them. They call up this attorney. They say, Hey, so-and-so processor just, just uh, stole, took my reserves, stole a couple months from me. They're holding 400,000. Well, who were they? Well, I don't know. I met them at a credit card convention. Well, there's the guy. Well, I don't know. I think they're in Sweden I, I, or maybe India. I'm not sure they weren't in the United States. So then they pay him all kinds of money to try to find this payment processor and get the money back for them. Well, w- whenever it gets fixed up, what they ended up doing is saying, well, who do you trust that's a payment processor? And he had about five or six companies that he would refer deals to. And, and it's illegal for an attorney to get paid on referrals. So he would just refer them refer off. And he floated the idea out to me, hey, we should start a payment processing company. We know this better than anybody. We could just refer the deals back to us. We'll take care of everybody because we know this. We know where their pain points are. We know where they're hurt. And we'll just make sure not to do that. And blah, blah, blah. I said, no, man, I'm a stand up comedian. I don't want to own a payments credit card processing company. Well, then I got engaged. And then I got engaged. And he was very smart with his timing. He would wait. He waited until I got married. And then he said, are you sure you don't want to? make some extra money for your family. And, and, and we started, <laughs> he got me and we, we started a, a high risk, 
a high risk credit card business. And that was about three years ago. And we did very, very well. Um, you know, uh, one of the biggest brothels in, I put a post on Facebook. Hey, if anybody needs high risk credit card processing, not thinking any of my comic friends would know what the hell that was. I got a response instantly. Do you know, so-and-so ranch in Nevada, the, the biggest brothel there. I said, of course I do. There's like seven brothels. And my friend said, I know the owner. He just lost his credit card processing. I said, why? And he goes, reputational risk. A new bank bought the portfolio. The, I guess the guy was a Christian or didn't didn't think prostitution was a good thing. And they just terminated the account just on reputational risk. The, the actual place didn't do anything wrong. They lost like, you know, whatever it was, a million or two a month in processing. So I had the, the, the guy's cell phone, the owner of the, the brothel, and I called and I said, hey, I think I could help you. And that was client number one. And, and we just took off from there. Um, and uh, we did really, really well over the last three years. Right before quarantine, I, I just had a gut feeling I wanted to start my own company. And I, I, I said, hey, I think I want to part ways and just do things myself. I, I kind of wanted to pivot in a different direction. My old partner wanted to do more low risk, so like restaurants, and he was kind of getting older too. So he, I think he wanted stuff that wasn't as wild as what I was into. So mm -hmm. he wanted just to do coffee shops and restaurants where, you know, you you just it's just a more normal kind of conventional world. And I'm kind of I'm a stand up comic. I, I I'm a little edgy. I like the wild side of life, and so I I just love high risk payments or anybody who's getting you know not a fair shake. And I like fighting and I like talking shit and I like fighting for my merchants and I like merchants that are kind of pushing the edge of, of what they're doing. And, and, um, and I, he bought me out and I started aqua payments. And so my company specializes in people that have had a hard time getting credit card processing. And I enjoy the battle and I enjoy the, the difficulty level. And I enjoy helping people that are kind of punk rock on the outs, on the outskirts of, of the payment world. Yeah. And that's class. That's, that's adult, that's CBD. And, and those are my people. And, and I'm, more comfortable with these people or with, with you all than with a pizza shop, right. you know, even yeah. though they're good, you know, yeah, more definitely. fun to wake up to. Well, I know like the 20, so here we are. Yeah, exactly. And, and we're still all going virtual, you know, it's, it's a, it's amazing. And I'm really curious to see how, yep. how things like, there's so many things that have been implemented because of COVID and, you know, blah, 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 that I'm stoked on, like just for just life conveniences, you know? And I'm kind of curious to see what's going to stick. And I, I, yeah, you know, 100%. I, I think you jumping into this is good timing because it's, you know, like I was saying before, it's like the the amount of glass blowers I've talked to on the show and just outside the show that have actually had one of their best years of their career in the last and for 2020 because of social media and things going virtual. But again, yet to have digital payment access and all these other small companies that are charging crazy fees or you know confiscating funds because of the, what it is you know like there's platforms out there like the etsy's of the world that you that are, you can sell pipes on it but there's they're very specific with what the verbiage is and you know and forever you oh, go on. you want to know my big issue here here's my here's my big gripe right you know my, my number one so this is what happens all the time right i'm out prospecting like like how i reached out to you instagram mm -hmm. By the way, has just been. A, I mean, it's free. It's been. It's been a blessing for marketing. I just reach out and I just say, "Hey, you know, if you ever need a merchant account for glassware, I'm your guy." You know, and um, people are just so grateful to to just have that information. And what would I bump up against a lot? And here's what I here's the conversation that I'll have after we hang up. I'm gonna have this conversation 30 times today. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? I'm on. I'm on PayPal. I'm doing. And I even made a funny meme. My wife thought was too aggressive. It was someone saying, "Hey." I'm doing great with PayPal right now. And there's a train coming on the track and the train smashed into the car and said, Hey, can I get your number again? I don't think it's working. So my wife's like, Steven, this, that's a little aggressive. I'm like, I, I don't give a shit. But it's how it is, dude. I, I'm going to do some. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. I got so, so, fucked on like a thousand dollar order one time because it was an order in Scotland. All the time. I, I couldn't tr track the tracking because, you, you know, with the postal service and PayPal sided with them because they said they, they didn't all, get their all, shit and I got fucked. I'll, all day long. So, so I just did stand up in Boise, Idaho, two weeks ago. Uh, the the headliner that I went with paid for my uh, plane ticket, and but I, I paid first. He goes, "Hey, I'm gonna shoot you a little." He's such a good guy. He's like, I'm gonna shoot you some money back. He shot me money on PayPal. Great, it was great. He's my friend. He wanted to give me money on PayPal. That's great. 
to buy a four hundred dollar dab rig on PayPal is not the tool. That's like you know, yep. that's like use you know, you have a, you're a cement company and you're using a Honda Civic to haul cement because it's cheaper. It's that's just crazy. Right. It's not the right tool for the job. So people are like, hey man, it's so much cheaper. This the the square in PayPal and I and I could almost just set a timer on my phone and three months later I get I get I get calls all day. Hey, do you remember me? No, I don't. Oh, I you know I was on Square. Yeah, what happened? Well, I don't know. All of a sudden, like they shut down my account and now I can't get processing and I try to call someone else and I can't get processing anymore. Here, I'm going to I'm going to give you in two minutes or less the, the, what to avoid. Square, Stripe, PayPal, Venmo, Zelle, Cash App. What, what happened though, if you have a pizza parlor or a coffee shop, those are great tools. If you're if you're selling salads on Sunset Boulevard, use Square, use Stripe. If you're selling CBD, if you're selling an adult, uh, cigars, um, glassware, don't don't go the cheaper route. It's so much more expensive. That's what I tell people. My right. product isn't even cheap. It, it's just slightly more expensive than Square. And what Square does, and this is my issue with Square. They're a great company. They're not bad vibe at all. But Square, Stripe, PayPal, they make it easy for everybody to sign up, right? They say, yeah, sure. You're signed up. You're signed up in two hours. And then they shut you down later. So they say yes when the real answer is no. And then they shut you down later, which I have a problem with. You should just say no right off the bat and don't just drag people through the mud. And, and, and what, what happens is what, what people don't know because of working at this law firm and any of the listeners out there, your glassware, you should be Googling and knowing what this is. Google the match list, M-A-T-C-H, or um, T-M-F list. They're synonymous. One is for visa one is for mastercard you lose your processing say all of a sudden paypal terminates your glassware account one day or square they go oh shit these guys are doing dab rigs we don't we just found out what dabs are we don't like it terminate you get put on a on a match list which means you can't get credit card processing in your name for five years so a lot of times great i'll I'll be on their website beautiful glass company they're just you know out of hawaii and they're just it's incredible work they're they're selling eighty thousand dollars of um of of pieces a a month they were on square it was cheaper hey steve sorry about it we're just going to use square they call me back and i go what happened they go well square has twenty thousand of my dollars i hired an attorney to get it back and they shut me down and they took my last month's okay cool so you're out 40 grand and now you're going to pay an attorney 30 to get it back now, let, let's see if we can help you. I go and call my bank and they say, okay, cool. And I get all the ownership documents. They call me back and say, hey, Steve, so-and-so Hawaii pieces, they're on match list, man. I, I can't help you. Sorry. It looks like a great company. Sorry, man. They shouldn't have used Square. And that's it. That's it. Jesus. And I, now I could take you I could take you to a bank in the Cayman Islands um, that'll, that'll board you, that'll board you for 10% that – I don't really have that much faith in. I don't even, to be honest with you, I, I don't even do those deals anymore unless it's for like a friend that said, hey, I know the risk. I don't care. I just need to be up. Or or sometimes, they, and I don't do this, but they'll have to use their their wife's name or their husband's name or their friend's mm-hmm. name. So so there's not only a risk of losing the processing, 50-50, you get put on this match list, you're screwed. The attorney I used to work for for 20 grand will get you off the match list. So that you, you just start getting into these really expensive waters trying to save a few pennies on processing and i just yeah you know 10 years from now five years from now this might not be the case you know glassware mm-hmm. might not be high risk but right now it is oh yeah totally and it's especially with the legalization of things going on you know across the state the country you know it's and every state having yeah. their different laws and rules and regulations and it's just it's horseshit and i just know like cash was always what was my, my normal payment was cash from everybody i like i had a wholesaler that yep. that bought a lot of my work and he paid me in a check he had a different company name on his checks because it was legitimate for him and he knew like the risk of having you know joe joe blows tobacco smoke shop you know i'd get flagged by yeah. depositing the check in my bank account and i've had other smoke yep. shops over the years that have had just a generic llc like you said maybe their wife's name is on there instead because they know that if i get that payment processed and it says tobacco pipe whatever on there that it may not i may not be allowed to deposit it they may close my account and confiscate my shit or confiscate their stuff because of it. it's just isn't that crazy? The the it's attorney fun. that I used to work for represented some of the biggest um, uh, cannabis companies, right? The the ones that are on the marquees on you know on all the streets and stuff like that. And he would get his in his business bank account. He would get his uh, P 
payments by them flag. And he'd go, God damn it. But he, you know, luckily he was a banking attorney. So he'd march in the bank and say, Hey, you're not doing this right. And blah, blah, blah. And I, and I would ask him, I would say, Hey, why did that? Why did he goes, because I, I'm helping a cannabis related company, even though I'm an attorney, a cannabis slash e-com attorney, they would still uh, 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 freeze his accounts and he would have to go back into the bank and say, no, these are a client. I'm not buying weed from them. I'm actually representing them. And then they would release his funds. And, and I just think for me, I just think that's so silly and so stupid. And and it, it's almost stupid that we're even having this conversation. I agree, man, there. especially because it's a, a legitimate billion dollar industry, if not trillion dollar industry. You know, the way things are going, yeah. there's so much money yeah. to be made. And these banks are like, whatever, you know. Yeah, but see, that's what that's that's the one thing that I sell is there's probably about mm, about 20 banks in the United States that have a an appetite we call it for high risk. So they'll maybe they have their real estate, uh, uh, their real estate, a little bit of real estate in their portfolio. They'll have some checking accounts, some savings accounts. Then they have merchant services, and there's certain banks within their merchant services that have high risk uh, that that are able to take on some high risk. Like I bank at Chase Bank for my business. And um, they don't do high risk at Chase Bank. So I just told the guy, hey, if you ever have anybody looking for a CBD account, Glassware account, please send them over to me. So there's only a certain uh, uh, portion of banks that have high risk. So I think what a, what a lot of folks do as well is they'll lie to the bank. So there's a, another thing to, to Google who you're working with, right? If you don't go through me as a payment processor, that's fine. But just Google who you're working with. There's a lot of folks that just that are just shady in the, in the credit card processing space. It's the last space that's really unregulated um, huh. by, by the government. I think it's becoming regulated, but there's so many hustling kind of shithead used cars salesmen that will, so say like I have a, a glassware company, right? I quote them a certain price. I'm taking them to a legitimate bank, uh, uh, setting up with the merchant account, doing it the right way. A lot of times a guy will, will come in or, or a gal will come in and say, Hey, Heard you're working with Aqua Payments. We could beat the price by 80%. And you're going 80%. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, we're going to get you up. Dude, they're up in, in, in 12 hours. What they'll do is it's big in our world. It's called miscoding. So they'll say you're selling pizza on your website. It's a pizza place. And they'll, they'll, they'll miscode it on the app, get you an app for super cheap. They'll process with you for three or four months. And then you'll get shut down and put on match list. And this, this, Payment processor is gone. They're just not returning your calls. It's not worth it for you to go find them. So there's a whole uh, – be really careful who you process credit cards with because there's a whole slew of, of this industry of just kind of hustlers that just run around just doing things the shitty way, looking to make a quick buck, and you don't even know their last name. You know, yeah. and it's not worth it. If this shit goes down, it's not worth it for you to find them and hire an attorney. You're just like, I got burnt. So that's why you just want to know who you're dealing with and trust is everything in this business. Yeah, 100%. And that's Especially that's, that's why I did, like, you know, I got I got the message from you and stuff, and I was, you know, you know, I went back and forth, but you could have been some, some fat dude sitting in a fucking chair in his underwear just, you know, spamming me with some bullshit. So, like, I went and did some research, and the guys are legit. Yeah. Hey. You know. Yeah, no, and I and I appreciate that. And just to full full transparency, I do sometimes uh, uh, do my marketing in my underwear. So, hey, but I've lost too. weight. So that's like, <laughs> 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 full. Yeah, I am. I am. And, and a couple months ago, I was chubby, and I was in my underwear. I possibly when I reached out to you. But yeah, but nowadays the the beautiful thing is you could just Google. You can just Google anybody. Yeah. And a lot of times, I work with other processors, and the first thing I'll do is Google their name and BBB. And it's like, oh, so nine people complained about them. I'm not doing business with them. Yeah, smart. I'm not working with them, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's so funny, man, because the tobacco like the tobacco industry for so long has been like tied in with the tattoo industry as like just being these miscreant, you know, degenerate assholes. And don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. there's there's a good percentage of us out there that are that way. But the majority of us in, in both industries nowadays are le fucking legit artists that are just trying to make a living and and feed their families you know and it's like it don't matter what the hell you make it's it, you know it's just people are getting fucked you know what it, you know what it is too and because now i've been in e-commerce e seven eight years and you know just having to look at websites and instagram and stuff i go with my gut and that's probably not you know the best that's just the best thing that's that's worked out for me i could look at somebody's glass site and i either get a good feeling or a bad feeling mm. i could look at someone's cbd site and I, you just your your gut says don't talk to this person. This isn't the right one. Or oh, these these are these are cool dudes. These are cool gals. Like like work with them. And and that's 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 
every time I haven't listened to that, I've gotten in trouble. And I'm like, why am I dealing with this person? Then they're asking me how to do things illegal. And I'm like, ugh, you know, so like in e-commerce, it's just, it's just, it's kind of like a gut check thing. You go, I can look at their site. I can look at their products and be like, oh, these people are cool. I want to work with them. I want to help them. You know, so that's been a game changer Mm -hmm. for me is just to actually listen to my gut with these deals because you're not meeting in face to face a lot. So you can't really see them look into their eyes. So you're having to look at kind of their 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 site and you can kind of get a vibe if someone's if someone's doing stuff right or not yeah know? and that's why i think it's so important for those that are on that have websites and social media not to rely on those as ways to promote themselves but if you have them to make sure that they look decent that you know it's just not just some bullshit 100 you know? yep 100 so, because professionalism is is you know it's that whole uh, you know it sucks you know having to judge a book by its cover but in a sense you know we we have to in some sense you know 100 percent. like who is this person yeah you know, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Gut feelings are, are definitely important. So do you guys like have specific banks that you're dealing with in terms of processing? So like if I had, you know, cause I deal with Chase myself, I don't have a business account, yeah. just my personal account, but my checks and my payments and everything goes through them. <clears throat> so if I'm doing processing through you guys, I would get, you know, say I have a sale, I get the order processed through you guys, you guys then yeah. have the capital, then you would transfer funds to my chase account or are you dealing with specific banks that we have to deal with no to your to your business bank account and this is what i always say i don't get super involved and, I, and i'm becoming more involved like actually this last two weeks i've been reaching out to business banks just because just to be just to be to add more value mm-hmm. and and to, to get more deals boarded so what i bump up against let's take cbd for instance i don't know if you you work with cbd folks at all but or if I should just stick it to glassware, but a lot well, of times CBD is fine. Um, I have friends that are in, in the industry. Yeah, yeah. So CB, so CBD and glassware is eighty percent of my business, you know, and then adult and then then other you know other wild cards. But uh, um, what, what I'll do, my first question is for CBD. They have to have their COAs, their certificate of analysis, and then I say, hey, because I'm just giving them a mer- I, I'm supplying them with a merchant account with the bank, but that's different than their business checking account. Right. So my next question is. Do you have a business checking account with a bank that knows you're doing CBD or with a bank that knows you're doing glassware? Most banks are, a lot of banks are, are cool with glassware. A lot aren't cool with CBD. So I just have to know. So if they're like, well, I'm with Wells Fargo, they don't know I'm selling CBD. It's not worth my time because what I do is I, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. We get them set up with a merchant account and then we start shooting money over to their Wells Fargo because we're so legit and, and up and honest and, 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 and forthright. It says glassware coming through. A glassware merchant. He just sold a glass bomb. Yeah. You know, yeah. glass water pipe coming through. And then their their personal che- our, our banking uh, a business uh, checking account will say, well, wait a minute, we didn't know they were doing glassware. So I I have to ask now before we set this up in four months from now, their Wells Fargo or their Chase or whoever they're using is like, oh, I didn't know you were doing this. So I say, hey, I just in order to work with you, you got to you know, there there's not a lot I can't like triple check, but I just say, hey, give me your word. Does your bank know what you're selling? Your glassware, that's fine. We love you. Do you have a business checking account with a bank that knows you're doing glassware? And so um, what I'm starting to do is build relationships with business um, with uh, business banks that have the capacity to, to bank just for uh, business banking, uh, CBD and glassware and adult and all that kind of stuff. But those are actually hard, hard to find. So what I end up doing is I have a lot of clients in glassware and CBD that are really cool that have become friends. And if, if, I really like somebody, I will in- make the intro um, to the glassware company or to the CBD company say, hey, would you help them out with, with banking or introduce them to your person? And that's the the way I do it nice. now. Which is cool. Yeah, man, but I like, like to have those relationships. It's, it's a, just a cool, it's yeah. a cool vibe to do that though. Oh, I agree. And it, it shows that you have integrity as a business too. You're not just like there to make be shady and you know you want to keep everything above board. It's just so much better that way, man. Yeah, it's totally. more work, but it's just like it just I sleep better at night, you know. Yeah, well, you know, it's and it's interesting. Like I have friends out in Colorado that you know, cannabis is legal across everything right there, and and they have dispensaries, yeah. and they get their banks won't take their money, and it's like you know you have a dispensary, which means that by law you have to have certain filings done, but the the federal side of things, you know, whatever. So if you have like mm-hmm. everything's legit that says this is what I do and then nobody wants to fuck with you, it's like, okay, so what do you do? You, you, know, you can't just rely on sticks and stones and stuff for transactions, you know? It's I know. 
I know there, there are some banks that are, you know, credit unions. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of folks are using credit unions yeah, that's what um, yeah. for cannabis and CBD. Yeah. Like around California, Texas and, and Arizona and stuff. So a lot of, a lot of the companies that I, I bank for CBD there are, are, you know, work with for CBD bank, uh, credit unions, or there's a company called Dama financial. Is that because they're mainly private, like private banks and not like, I, I don't know, you know, honestly, I, I think so, but I don't know the answer to that 100%, but that's that's my guess, yeah. you know? Um, maybe, maybe there's just maybe some loophole there. I, I don't know. Another, another uh, Dama Financial is another place that a lot of the, the cannabis folks bank with. I think they're they're more of a consulting, so they'll, they'll find you a bank, but okay. Dama Financial, D-A-M-A -A Financial, but yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm bumping in. I think t First Bank, uh, uh, Tory Pines Bank, that's like right out of La Jolla, California, right next to San Diego, or in San Diego, they bank a lot of cannabis and CBD. So I'm actually meeting with somebody over there just say, hey, if you know people, let's let's, you know, let's share our resources, you know, because I have a lot of folks that are, hey, Steve, I, you know, we're well funded. We have a million bucks. We're starting a CBD company. I don't have a business checking account. So it's like, you know, I'd love to be able to introduce them to, to the person over there, yeah. you know, rather than another company that knows somebody that knows somebody, you know? Yeah. And I think that the fear that a lot of artists out there have because of all this stuff is why they, they're not legit and why they're not paying taxes and stuff, you know, and why they didn't get a stimulus check because they don't have an LLC because they're not paying taxes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I know, you know, I it know, kills know. them, you know, and, and I preach on this show, like I do, like I was saying, like do little short episodes and it's, you know, talking about taxes and keeping all your ducks in a row and your financial house and everything. And, as much as I can sit here and, and preach and help and offer PDF downloads to fill out your shit with, a lot of people don't want to do it again because they're afraid of, you know, potentially the cops knocking on their door, which what may, probably won't happen. But that's the fear, you know, yeah. you go to the, the extreme, you know, because also a lot of artists in the industry have some sort of, uh, you know, mental disorder, quote unquote. You know, we all deal with anxiety or depression yeah. or some shit, which then is like a catalyst yeah. to fuck you up even more so, you know, so it's... it's I have anxiety bad. Yeah, you yeah I work through my anxiety every day. <laughs> yeah, 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 me too. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I'm a, I'm a yeah. quote-unquote performer myself I, over at Disney doing glass on stage all day. And early on when I would... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. But early on, man, I was like anxious as shit. And I'd get on there and, you know, if I was doing stand-up comedy, I'd be a hot fucking mess. So, it's you know, I think when you're comfortable yeah. doing what you're doing, it's a little different when you're dealing with anxiety. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I was, I, you know, yeah, I, I got anxiety doing stand up for years and years. I've been doing it about 12 years now and I don't get it as much, just maybe a little stage nervous before, but yeah, I would, I would throw up before, you know, yeah. I would throw up before I'd be like, Oh my God, you know? Yeah. It's interesting. They, they always say that those are the kind of things that if you actually are doing that, that you, you're probably because you're doing what you should be doing. Like you're just that hyped up and nervous and anxious because you love what you're doing so much and you're that concerned about it, you know? Yeah, and I've noticed that like the 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 stand up comedians when when I first started that weren't nervous to perform always suck. Yeah, and I don't know what that is. I don't know. If it was just like they're they're like, no, I'm not nervous. I'm like, oh, and then they would go and bomb and not know that they bombed. And I'm like, God, you know, that that seems like a nice world to live in, just the fantasy world. But right. I don't know. It yeah. wasn't. It's not my my not my reality. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, it's it's interesting stuff, but you know. I don't know, man. I, th I think uh, what you guys are doing is definitely going to benefit, hopefully, millions of people down the road. You know, especially being brand new, like you guys are. Yeah, it, it's cool. It, it, you know, I, I I watch a lot of mafia videos, and it's funny. Like the like this, uh, I was watching a video on the guy. I think he's actually the governor of Nevada now. He was a uh, the mafia attorney. He moved to Vegas and represented one uh one one mobster and then the next one referred him. Next one referred him. And it's funny, you know. My wife and I we always talk about what we're up to at the end of the day, and I'm like. I'm the glassware uh, merchant processor now. She's like, really? I'm like, yeah, because everybody keeps referring everybody, you know, everybody that I get a, a merchant account with says, hey, would you help my friend? Would you help my friend? So now all of a sudden, you know, 80% of my business is glassware and CBD too, but it kind of bumps up into each other. And I didn't plan that. You know, it just, I, I've, I've gotten pretty good at it and I have it down and I'm I'm the glassware guy now. And I, and I like it. It's cool. Heck yeah. Have you looked at getting into uh, like doing like a little booth at like some of the trade shows? You know what? I, that's so funny. I was going to ask you when we were texting before the show, um, when the world opens back up. Yeah, I, I would actually love to. And I would love to just go because I go to a lot of high risk credit card trade shows, which, by the way, man, weirdest fucking oh, weirdest imagine. trade shows in the world. <laughs> you, high risk credit card trade trade show. I mean, it looks like the space bar from from Star Wars <laughs> when they're all like in that bar and there's just like 
two people would be barefoot. It's just like, like, and you know, just these e-commerce crazy fucking people yeah. telling my wife, I'm like, I've never, you know, 30% are criminals. You know, you're just like, what is going on here? But, but, uh, but yeah, yeah. where, um, but I, I like conventions, I like getting out of town and going, what, what are the good conventions to go to in glassware? Uh, champs has always been like the big one for like the adult tobacco industry. It's, they've been around for like 40 years now or something out in Vegas. Yeah, it's like the cons- awesome. it's like the I'm consumer go. hospitality adult manufacturing show or some shit like that. It stands for, <clears throat> but the the one of the uh, better known ones. It's a newer trade show is uh, Glass Vegas, and they're actually gonna. I believe it's in end of April, first week, two weeks of May. They do it every year, and uh, they're more of like the they're specifically for the American glass blower and pipe maker. So they're definitely one. I can actually get get give you the uh, when we get off the air. I'll give you the contacts for uh for Amy and she's. Oh, I'll I'll be there. I'm gonna go this year. I'm going to Hawaii at the end of April. Nice. But if it's the beginning of May, I'm gonna I'll be I'll be there. Yeah, I'll send you a link to their website and uh all the show notes. Oh, cool. That'll be fun. Yeah, that's definitely a place. Yeah, to that'll go. be fun to go to. Right on. Yeah, I'll be I'll be there. I'm gonna start doing that. Yeah, dude, because you got the whole gamut from smoke shop owners to the the actual pipe makers that are there, you know, so you can hit both sides of the fence. Yeah, perfect. And then perfect. I'll, I'll, I'm take, gonna go. I'll take uh, 10%. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, I'm reasonable. We can work something out. I'm reasonable. I got to talk to my lawyer first to see what's going on yeah, here. Yeah, me too. But... <laughs> yeah, I always just put on the lawyer. That's the one thing I learned with yeah. the law firm. Just, hey, I got to talk to my lawyer first. There's no, there's not even a lawyer. You know, That goes with any hey, answer to anything. To uh, so what, what are you doing tomorrow night? Uh, let me talk to my lawyer first, so I'll get back to you. Yeah, exactly. Dude, exactly. <laughs> let me talk to my lawyer. Let me talk to my lawyer. See what he says. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and if you get awesome. if you end up going out there, dude, let me know because I'll uh, I'll I'll mention you in some future episodes and you know post you up about it. About you being yeah, let's there. grab coffee or something. Yeah, let's I, grab coffee or something. If so you're out there, are you going? Not this year. No, I I'm not prepared for it. I would, so I had the girls on that run that that started the whole Las Vegas show, <clears throat> and I was supposed yeah. to go last year, and then just time with my work schedule it's just timing wise it just didn't go well and then with COVID and shit i don't have like i, I would go there to vend sell my own words and interview glass blowers and stuff yeah i'm just not prepared for it this year but uh i'm definitely going for 2022 i'll definitely be there 100 2022 yeah i'll definitely be there for sure it it's it's so funny i i uh yeah this is it's may 13th through the 15th i'm looking right okay now yeah exactly. that, this will be great i'm gonna go wow yeah i get lost it's so funny because i have to like i have add and, and i'm you know, just prospecting on, on Instagram and reaching out to glass companies. I get like lost on a glass page, like looking at the products and I'm like, Steven, pull out, like just get, you know, cause I just like get entranced and we'll start like, you know, just looking at like glass products. And I'm like, I'm working right now. Just keep it moving. Oh dude, it's know? the worst. I'm the, I'm cool. the same way. Yeah. I'm, I'm medicated and everything. So cause of it. But, <laughs> like I just post, like, same. I, I stop like going on and looking at shit sometimes cause I just get lost. You know, like I don't go on TikTok because of it. I just get sucked into these 30 second hilarious videos. And like, I, I, I got, I, I'm obsessed with TikTok. I just get pulled in, you yeah. know, I get pulled in, but I'm really, yeah, I'm really into like, I saw like glass uh, grapes, these purple glass grapes, like these fake grapes. And I was like, Oh, I want to buy that. Like yesterday. I, I really, I just, I've always loved stained glass as a kid. I'm, I'm really into colored glass. It just always called me. Hell yeah. You know, I'm really been really into, I went to Catholic school. So just looking up at those big stained glass, yeah. just kind of tripped me out as a kid. Yeah. Me too. Same here, man. I was an altar boy the whole nine yards. <clears throat> yeah. Me too. Me too. Yeah, it's funny. I was, yep. I think I was ten or eleven, and I was talking to the priest, and then we the sex com- conversation came up, and I, about priest not, you know, being whatever. And I, t- yeah. I told him I was like, I was interested in going that that route of becoming a priest, and I was, and he's like, and I, we brought up the sex thing, and I was like, eh, I guess I'm not gonna be a priest because I, I know when I at that, <laughs> at that young age, I knew I wanted to eventually, you know, have sexual relations with somebody. <laughs> so, Me yeah. too. Not that, kid. That not was, kids. Yeah, that's you know. a deal breaker. <laughs> that's a deal breaker. Yeah. That's a deal breaker. Exactly. So fuck all that. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Similar, right, yeah, cool, man. yeah. I look forward to getting together one of these days, dude. Sound like we got a, a lot of fun things in common. Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Well, you got I me. Mean, I'm I'm gonna be going to this this uh, glass show for sure. I'm I'm going. This is cool. Hell Not yeah. open to the public, wholesale buyer, media, or glass artist only. Can I get in there? I think you should to be. Go as a guest. Yeah, quite possible. I'll talk to Amy about it because. Uh, Awesome. There's a there's yeah there's like some back doors. I might help you to help you get in there. Cool. 
Because right you, you definitely be awesome. you'd be an asset, you know, to be to make to, to, for you to be there. <clears throat> yeah. You know. I don't, yeah, this I, looks cool. I don't know if they'd require you to to buy a spot or buy just buy a pass to come in, but either way, you can go in there and probably do your own little soliciting. Yeah. Yep, that's awesome. I'll just buy like I like buying a pass and just walking around because I'm hyper, so I just I'd walk around and just talk to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Have a t-shirt on, and a hat, and a cape. Yeah. Yes, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like a, <laughs> like the Aquaman kind of thing out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I could I could do that. <laughs> Possibly Batman. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling. In, in well, I was thinking Aquaman, yeah, you know, because it's kind of on the, on the theming of, uh, you know, your branding and stuff. Oh, you know, Got dude, I, I might take that. That's funny. Just change it to your like your color Aquaman. scheme. Be like, be the Aquaman. Yeah, I'll do Aquaman. Just put my face on it. Just saying, helping glassware, CBD, and you know, whatever. Yeah. That's that's funny. And then eventually, if Very, this ever, I hope I don't get sued. If, if you know, cannabis is ever like federally legalized, you guys can then become like. Aqua payments and actually like have like a water pipe on your on your page, you know, as like part of the water thing. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Oh my God. These connections. Hey, I'm good at marketing, dude. I'm I'm uh, I'm expensive though. <laughs> like <Yeah>. like yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I mean, I'm pretty. Re I'm reasonable with this. Yeah, with with CBD, it's a little more expensive, but with glassware, actually, the um the pricing. So like CBD in adult, it's it's more expensive, mm -hmm. but um. But with glassware, it's it's not that much more expensive than square and shred. That's why everybody's like, dude, it's not it's not that much more, you know? Yeah. To stay up forever. Yeah. Or that, for, you know, as long as possible. Yeah, because like you're saying, man, like, you know, if you're paying, say, 5% for processing each payment and down the road you lose like 10 grand and the guy down the street is only like 8% processing and he's legit and yeah. you don't lose 10 grand, that, you know, you do the math. You're definitely making yeah. more in the long run. Yeah, and this is, and you'll get it. So, so CBD is from is anywhere from like three to five percent, three to four nine five. But, but um, glassware, I can get it a whole lot cheaper. Nice. It's, it's not that. It's not that much. Yeah, it's we do like interchange plus like a point and a half. So it's it ends up being nothing, you know. And it's just in the bank knows what's going on. So yeah, ours isn't ours isn't bad. And they don't have huge reserves. Sometimes no reserves at all. So it's like. Yeah, this is this is why I'm just spending most of my time there because it's easy. The customers are happy, and it's like it's just an easy one to do. Yeah, it makes total sense. Hell yeah, yeah. CBD's a little tougher. Yeah, I could imagine like you're saying with the regulations and all that stuff having to have. It's weird. Anytime lab there's a food component, shit. lab. Anytime is that if it's chocolate or a drink, those are really tough to do. Believe it or not, because huh. then the FDA gets involved. But if it's like a vape or if it's like a tincture, it's no problem. But my, my friend's starting a company and he has a chocolate. I'm like, I could do it, but it's just going to be tough. You know, it's going to take a little while longer. You have to get like all kinds of extra paperwork and stuff. It's weird. We're sh very strange, very strange world. But yeah. Yet you can go into the market and see it on the shelves. Right. Exactly. I, I'm glad you bring that up, dude. Cause like my wife's a pastry chef and I've been trying to talk her into, cause now that Florida legalized uh, edibles for medical use, um, and she's a pastry chef, and she yeah. she makes macarons like just amazing. She has, and what's fucked up Ooh, is I, I have I have the sweet tooth in the in the relationship. She doesn't have one, so hence why I've. Uh, That's why you're a good fit. Yeah, and why I put on she twenty pounds. She doesn't get high off her own <laughs> supply. Yeah, yeah, it's like living with your, <laughs> living with your crack dealer kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but uh, this could be fun. Yeah, um, maybe. <laughs> I've never smoked <laughs> crack, so I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, me neither. But I'm glad you're bringing it up because I want to. I want to help her get things set up you know to be able to down the road get this going for her and processing yeah, payments have, is one thing i have thing. a solution for that cool yeah okay yeah we'll be in touch yeah. for sure we'll talk, i have a yeah debit card it's debit card only i have another you know on the edges there's a there's a it's called an e-wallet i have like an e-wallet solution but i'm not even spending that much time doing that i'm just doing like with the can straight cannabis i'm doing a, a debit solution which is just more legit and I just I feel more safe with it, um, and and you know just traditional like CBD and glass. Yeah, I've kind of scaled back a little bit because I was going I was doing kratom, I was doing all kinds of stuff, but I'm just I've scaled it back to like glassware and CBD and a little bit of cannabis. Yeah, it's probably smart. Help you help you focus on the the details of the specifics what you need. <clears throat> yeah, so, I'm just getting better and better at it. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Well, uh, before we let you right go on. here and. Uh, Good to have you get on with your day. If you want to kind of give us some little parting piece of advice for those out there that are looking at processing payments and just in general, or whatever, and then also where we can find you out there in cyberspace. Yeah, perfect. So my, my whole thing is, um, you know, you've worked so hard to set your business up. You work your ass off on your product, on your website. Don't 
payment processing isn't the place to skimp. You know, there's, you know, I, I'm a small business owner. There's places to skimp. There's places to not, to not uh, get a good product. Payment processing is so important. It's, it's thought about last, but it's how you actually receive money for all the hard work you do. So, so it's really important. It's, we allow you to receive money from your, uh, from your customers. So that's, it's very important, you know, part of business. So I would just say, kind of be careful who you're working with. Um, uh, you know, if you're, if you're selling something a little on the edge, CBD, glassware, um, cannabis related, like soil, lighting, adult, um, you want the right tool for the job. And, um, if you're on Square, Stripe, PayPal, you know, nothing to freak out about, but just you might want to consider and just do a little Googling, Google match list, Google TMF list, and, you know, see what some of the dangers are. And I'm always happy to talk to anybody. I could see what you're doing, look at your page and see if you need me or not in about 30 seconds. Um, if you wanted to reach out, you could do that via email. That's Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, at aqua, A-Q-U-A, dash, there's a dash in there, P-A-Y-M-E-N-T-S dot com. So it's aqua dash payments dot com. So Stephen at aqua payments dot com. My friend made fun of me. He said, I don't like the dash in your thing. I, I guess uh, a, a water company in China has aqua payments. They, I, I try to buy it from them. They don't want to sell it. I, I don't know why they don't even use it, but that's another story. You could also find me on Instagram, DM. I'm, I'm real quick to DM. Um, it's just aqua payments, A-Q-U-A-P-A-Y-M-E-N-T-S. You DM me there, or you can hit me on my cell phone. It's 818 818- 808-2553. That's 818-808-2553. Um, if you think you need me, if you're doing glassware, if you're doing CBD adult, give me a shout, shoot me a text, show me your website, what you're doing. I'll let you know what I can do and I won't waste your time. I'll just say yes or no in 30 seconds. Hell yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, man. Likewise. I appreciate you. And uh, again, I'll get the... Yeah. Oh, and I want to get a, a shout out to... Oh, sorry. Give a shout out to, to Greg at 710tools.com. We just used our last customer. Nice. This last Friday, we, we got him a deal. So I just want to say what's up to him. Hell yeah. Nice. And I'll uh, make sure sorry I have to all... cut you off. Oh, no, you're good, dude. I'll have all your links in the show notes so everybody has uh, your contact information and can definitely reach out to you. And definitely take advantage of this, awesome. folks. Yeah, because this is uh, definitely some, some great information and insight and uh, just a different conversation to have because uh, that's what I like to do here. Right on. Yeah, maybe we'll have you come back and do some uh, half-hour routine of some stand-up comedy. <laughs> oh, I would love to. I'm dirty. I'm dirty. We're talking about high risk here. I'm a high risk stand-up. Hey, dude, man, so. we are all dirty. My wife actually uh, <laughs> doesn't like the things I say sometimes because of how raunchy I am. She's like, oh, that's just, what the fuck is that for? I'm like, I don't know. It's fun. I like saying dumb shit. My, my, <laughs> my wife's a stand-up comedy. You could check. So my name's Steve Randolph. You can check my stuff out. Just Googling me, Steven Randolph, R-A-N-D-O-L-P-H. And my wife name is Chelsea Skidmore, C-H-E-L-S-E-A-S-K-I-D-M-O-R-E. We actually had a podcast called The International Bad Boys with Sam Tripoli for, for a long time. So check out both of our stand-up too. I don't know if it might it might scare some people, but I don't give a shit. So there it is. There you go. Hell yeah. You ever listen to a last podcast on the left? No. Who's that? Who, whose podcast is that? Uh, it's just, they're actually a network. They have like 15 shows now or some crazy shit, but they do. It's, it's like a true crime oh, show. Well. They'll do like four or five episodes. Oh, I love that. <clears throat> but, uh, um, God, I'm having a fucking brain fart on the dude's name. <laughs> nah, it's all good. But he's like, some of the shit that he says would offend even the most just like heavy skinned, thin or thick skinned person. And I love it, dude. I just, yeah. it's just, yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to get into politics, but yeah. people are a little too sensitive these days. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Be, be very sensitive. Very <laughs> sensitive. Just because you're sensitive doesn't mean you're right. Exactly. You know? That's exactly. what I always think. Because your feelings are hurt doesn't mean you're right. You know? Yep. Exactly. Right on. Awesome, dude. We'll enjoy your rest of your day. Right on. Thank you so much. You too. Yeah, take it easy. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Peace. Bye.